But, Vicky, there are many ways we can detect Robertsonian translocation right here in our very own lab. Jeepers, Doctor! Will you show me? Of course. Well, Vicky, first of all, we need lymphocytes from a blood sample or fibroblasts from a skin scraping. We must culture all the cells for karyotype analysis because karyotypes produce the only definitive diagnosis of 129 Robertsonian translocation. There are three main ways we can detect Robertsonian translocations. G-banding, in which each chromosome pair stains in a characteristic pattern of light and dark bands, or G-bands. All of the chromosomes can be fully distinguished from each other, and any structural or numerical abnormality can be determined. The second method is known as C-banding, in which the centromeric region of each chromosome and regions containing constitutive heterochromatin are stained. A 129 bovine will appear as a monocentric chromosome with a reduction in the heterochromatin block of the centromeric region. So doctor, what you're saying is that essentially G and C banding allow for the detection of structural or numerical abnormalities. Correct again, Vicky, but the most sensitive method of detection of Robertsonian 129 translocations is a method known as fluorescent in situ hybridization or more commonly known as fish. <laughs> <laughs> but Robertsonian 129 translocations are no laughing matter. In the fish method, an extra sub-metacentric chromosome and loss of two acrocentric chromosomes can be observed using fluorescent probes, as you can see here. So as you can see here, Vicky, a cattle producer will only know if he has 129 Robertsonian translocation in his herd if he performs these genetic tests. Otherwise, he might not know his reason for reduction in productivity and profit. Thanks for taking the time to explain this to me, Doctor. No problem, Vicky, and you're welcome. Together, we can stop the spread of 129 Robertsonian translocation. Mm -hmm.